Hello and welcome back to Hydroponics Daily. I'm Dr. Russell Sharp and this is your go-to podcast for everything soilless cultivation. It's still swelteringly hot here in the UK, 32 degrees Celsius. So I've made the effort to close all the windows and turn all the fans off so I may collapse halfway through recording this episode but hopefully I'll stick with it. Today we are going from one extreme to the other. Yesterday we talked about seedling establishment and today we're going to go all the way through the growing cycle all the way to flushing your crops just before you harvest them. So this is a topic that sparks a lot of debate amongst growers. Flushing. Whether you grow lettuce or legal cannabis, the chances are you've heard about this practice, but is it essential? Um, What actually are in those flush products you might see in a grow shop and which crops benefit from it? So let's unpack it. What is flushing? So in hydroponics, flushing refers to running clean, nutrient-free water through your system, so not fertigation solution, usually a few days before harvest. The idea is that this removes excess nutrients, salts and residues from the plant tissues themselves, but also the root zone. So in theory, what can this do? Well, it can, it's thought that it might improve flavour and aroma, and it's particularly popular in legal cannabis, tobacco, it reduces the harshness in the crop if you're going to smoke it. And that's the theory anyway, before you cure, dry and cure. It can also lower residual salts in edible greens. And so for lettuce, some people flush their lettuce. Now, why would you want to reduce residual salts? Well, you would particularly want to reduce nitrate levels in your crop. Nitrates are a contaminant in drinking water and in food. They're great for growing crops. They're they're probably one of the best forms of nitrogen for growing crops. But in drinking water and if if too much soluble nitrates are in your food, then they can cause issues with your blood system and especially your hemoglobin. And if you're pregnant, then your baby can be born with something called blue baby syndrome. Sounds hilarious. I mean, you think of these sort of is it Smurfs? But no, it's actually not a good thing. It's, it means that the hemoglobin's damaged if you, your baby is born blue. Good news is they can recover quickly. But also there's other issues around nitrates and things like that. Well, I think it can affect your blood pressure and things like this. Some areas in, in, in the world have very high nitrate levels in their drinking water, and this is a problem. Other areas it's not. But in the food, you also want to reduce your soluble nitrate levels. That's why you would want to wash any leafy greens that have been treated with foliar fertilizers or foliar fertigation um, to reduce nitrate levels. So flushing could potentially help with that. So, as I say, legal cannabis is the most commonly flushed hydroponic crop. Growers typically flush 5 to 14 days before harvest, depending on the system. don't know of any hop growers that do this, probably because they're growing mostly in soil. As I say, the goal is mostly to remove nitrogen, but other mineral buildup that might affect the quality. Now, normally, they, people are using plain water. They might use iced water as well to just to stimulate the plant defences and the stress in the plant. But you can also buy commercial flush solutions, which are either ready to use or you dilute them. And we'll talk about them a bit later. So le- lettuce and spinach are sometimes flushed for one to three days before harvest, especially in systems with very high electrical conductivity, EC values when you're targeting food safety standards. Tomatoes and cucumbers, these are rarely flushed. These crops rely on consistent nutrient levels right up to harvest, and they are harvested continually. This is not one big bang and you're done, like a lettuce or legal cannabis crop. You're and strawberries, tomatoes, cucumbers, you're, grow, you're harvesting them all the time, so you can't flush. It's not, you couldn't fit that in with the system. So there. What are in most flush products? Well, Grow shop shelves are full with products marked as flush. Lots of the nutrient brands that will sell you 16 bottles in a range will contain a flush product, even though they claim they simplify growing. And they won't, often they won't say what's in these products. However, the most of the time, there's a lot of water in the product. The mostly water, 95, 97% water probably. They might contain, or the most of them normally contain citric acid. Citric acid is doing a, num- a couple of things there. They are, it is reducing the pH and it's also chelating some of the nutrients. It can remove some of them. It'll bind and remove residual minerals that wouldn't otherwise be removed from the water alone. Other m- options that could remove EDT, remove 
nutrients, chelate them, or EDTA, and other similar synthetic chelating agents. I would avoid this because you don't want to be adding too many synthetic chelates to your system if you can help it, especially if you're just about to harvest. Now, but so then normally what they contain is citric acid. Don't mix seed citric acid and EDTA together because EDTA is not stable at the low pHs that citric acid creates. So if you're going to manufacture one, make sure it's one or the other. There might be sugars and enzymes in there to support microbial breakdown or sweetened fruits, though the evidence for this is limited. However, these are normally not in flush products. They're normally in like hardening off products, the sugars, and then the enzyme products for breaking down grow media. And then low pH stabilizers that balance water chemistry as the nutrients are removed, but this is this again is probably going to be citric acid or something similar. You probably don't want to be using lactic acid or acetic acid because these are not as good at chelating as citric acid and they're harsher, they give off fumes and things like this. So always probably stick to citric acid. Um, people say that these products don't strip the plant, but citric acid is probably going to act like acid rain does. So I would never put a flush product on the foliage only ever on the soil because it's going to be stripping calcium out of and other nutrients off the root system as you go. So you don't want to be flushing too early because citric will strip calcium, phosphorus, other nutrients like this away from your plant. So be careful. I would say they do strip the plant if you're using citric. And then you've got to ask yourself a question, do you want to buy an expensive flush product or do you want to buy just some citric acid does now does flushing actually work and that's where the debate really hots up some studies suggest no measurable difference in active ingredients in the crops that have been tested and certainly no difference in flavor between flushed and unflushed product in in that's in edible crops and in uh, legal cannabis others reports a subjective improvement in smoking quality smoother taste cleaner ash things like this so it's very much up for debate and there's lots of different studies but subjectively people do claim and often people have very strong opinions on things like this in leafy greens short flushing can reduce nitrate buildup improve taste and shelf life and that's been studies have shown that so it's definitely one to look at in commercial food production, flushing isn't, isn't about taste, it's about food safety and mineral management, um, whereas in legal cannabis, it's about perception and subjective opinion often. So how do you do it? If you decide to flush, as I say, in legal cannabis, seven to ten, 10 days before harvest, leafy greens, one to two days. Avoid long flushes because you could damage the roots and you probably want to remove your fertigation solution from the when you're flushing, if you're using a flush product, because it will reduce the pH and nutrients will crash out of the solution and it's a waste of nutrition. You want to be removing that nutrient and the plant should senesce, so go yellower over the period or then when you're flushing. If you've got very high EC levels, then it might take longer to flush. Monitor your EC levels of your, your material adding. If it's water, it should be next to zero and then but especially monitor the ec of your runoff and see how that progresses over time and see if you can get it as close to zero as you get to the time where you're about to finish flushing and harvest so it's up to you to decide whether flushing is right for you in your context so it depends on your crop your goals and your system and your previous experience and what you want to say about your crop a lot of people might be a unique selling point so that it was flushed for a long time it was flushed with this certain product it was flushed with an edta free product it was flushed with organic acids things like this so that's been hydroponics daily for today flushing if you know somebody who flushes their crop or has strong opinions on flushing please share this episode with them if you've had this episode shared with you then you owe the person who shared it with you a pint. And as it's 32 degrees Celsius, and if you're listening to this today on Friday or over the weekend, you definitely owe them a drink. So get down the pub. Could be an alcoholic one, could be non-alcoholic, but you definitely owe them a drink. They've got to stay hydrated. If you have found it useful, then please screenshot this episode and share it on social media, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facey B. Do you remember Facey B when we used to call it Facey B when it was cool to be on Facebook? Not anymore, is it? I've been waffling for too long. I'm Dr. Russell Sharp, the inventor of liquid gold, as it's called in the UK, or gold leaf in the US. And I will see you again tomorrow where we'll talk about another subject to do with hydroponics. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.